are the only one of your kind. The last hope for peace in a world consumed by darkness. Okay, so I'm going to do a video today doing a review of The Last Airbender. It just came out last weekend. Uh, we were supposed to record our official show at the studio that we normally go to, Public Access Studio, but they're closed today because of the 4th of July, even though today's the 5th. I don't know. Um, so we might actually not have any more new reviews up for a little while, possibly next Monday, maybe even the Monday after that. So to hold you over, I'm going to do a quick review of The Last Airbender. So The Last Airbender is directed and adapted by the hit or miss famous director M. Night Shyamalan um, of The Sixth Sense and The Village and some other movies that some people really love and some people really hate. Okay, so now I'll just go into the movie itself. Okay, now it's going to be somewhat difficult to try to explain this plot because it's really, really convoluted. But basically what we have here is there's a young boy named Ang, or Ang, or I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Please, Avatar fans, don't kill me. Um, and he is basically a chosen one sort of kind of person. He's a long heir in this ancestry of what they call the Avatar, which is uh, somebody who has the abilities to bend or control all of the elements of the Earth. Fire, wind, water, and fire. No, I already said fire. And Earth. Um, whereas other people different regional areas of the earth have different controls over different elements. Like there's a water area and there's a fire area and blah blah blah. The firebenders as they're known um, are kind of an imperialistic uh, militant force that's trying to gain control of all the other elements. Um, so they want to capture um, before the, before he sort of self-realizes his potential, I suppose. And uh, then there's these two other guys, these kind of side funny-ish characters, I suppose, a girl and a guy. Um, and they have water powers or something, and they fly in this giant ox-looking deal, and they're trying to keep Ong protected from the fire people. Okay, so there's not a lot of uh, really famous actors in this movie. Almost none, actually. I think they're all lesser known at best. The only actor that I really recognized um, is the uh, the rebellious young firebender guy who is trying to um, get the approval of his father or something to that effect. Um, by capturing the last airbender. Um, <clears throat> he's played by, uh, ooh, I don't know his name. You know what? I have my DVDs right here. I can just look. Da, 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 da. He's played by this Indian fellow who is in Slumdog Millionaire. And his name is Dave Patel. Dev Patel. Um, <clears throat> and he's really honestly the most famous actor in the whole thing, and it's the second movie I've ever seen him in. Um, and the rest, I don't know, may have been found on Casting Call, a lot of ch child actors, um, and so what you end up with is a lot of really bad child acting. The bad acting pales in comparison to the even worse dialogue. The dialogue is absolutely horrendous. Um, nobody in this movie throughout this, I think it's a two-hour movie, uh, maybe an hour and forty, something like that. 
throughout the whole movie never opens their mouth unless they're going to give off just this huge spiel of exposition dealing with this mythology that the movie so desperately wants you to care about, even though I... Uh, I, di I didn't care about Avatar, um, the last year I remember the TV show. So if uh, they're trying to gain new fans by just filling me in on all of this mythology, they really kind of failed there because halfway through I be began to say, okay, so what? I don't care. As far as I can tell, the mythology is just kind of second-rate Lord of the Rings and Star Wars rehash. And uh, the rest of it... Um, just kind of bogged down the rest of the movie just with all of this nothing but expository dialogue and not only expository dialogue but we had you know a Star Wars-esque scroller at the beginning of the movie kind of explaining the history of the mythology and then every single character in the movie has nothing to talk about but what's going on in the movie and what's going to happen and what's already happened um, that's what was kind of funny, is like, they would give you exposition even if you didn't need it. Uh, you would you would see what happened, and then they would talk about it. Um, and then there would be flashbacks, I mean, pretty much any, and voiceover, pretty much any kind of use of exposition is used in this movie, and way too much. Um, so, by the middle of the movie, I, I, I went in knowing that critics were kind of giving it so-so reviews at best, <clears throat> but I said, you know what, I'll give it a fair shot. I'll go, I'm going in cold anyway, so we'll see how I feel about it. But by the middle of the movie, I was completely bored and completely annoyed with how much the movie wanted me to care. And uh, on top of it, the special effects were, they were okay. I saw it in 2D instead of 3D because I absolutely hate 3D movies. Um, but, so the special effects were okay, they were decent, but nothing that we haven't already seen in a Harry Potter movie. And, uh, the fight sequences were actually not handled very well at all. Uh, there was, throughout the whole movie, even though it's, it's somewhat supposed to be a pseudo-martial arts movie, uh, there's absolutely no actual contact between two characters. It's all them sort of waving their arms about, and then water or fire or something, or some CGI effect happens. So, throughout the whole movie, not a single person actually touched another person. And whatever there were a battle sequence, the camera would be so far panned in that, uh, you know, you could tell that the actors actually didn't have to do anything. A lot of it was just sound effects and special effects. So, uh, I was pretty disappointed by that, too. There's some okay visuals. Um, M. Night Shyamalan is uh, a fairly decent visual director. He knows how to build atmosphere and he knows how to set a mood. Uh, but after that, I'm not so sure if he has any more chops. Um, he had a few good stories in him back in the day with his first f f three, possibly four films. Um, but I honestly think that he should not be writing screenplays anymore. Um, I've always thought, and comment on this if you agree, I always thought M. Night Shyamalan would do really well if he was doing adapting Stephen King's work and somebody else was writing it. Somebody else completely. Like he could not touch the screenplay. So, I don't know. You tell me what you think there. I'm actually, you know, for a, for a critic or whatever, pseudo-critic, I am not an M. Night Shyamalan hater. I, uh, I liked The Village, um, and I have my own reasons for that, and I'll go into that maybe in a separate review. But, um, it wasn't really until Lady in the Water that I decided he was kind of losing it. And my big problem with Lady in the Water is the same as Last Airbender. Uh, there's just way too much exposition that I don't care about. So much mythology that the movie never really feels like it takes off. You're, you're still learning things by the end of the movie to, to set up the movie. You shouldn't be setting up the plot when you only have 15 move, minutes left in the movie. So... There's my last Airbender review. Um, I haven't actually watched any other reviews on this because I wanted to stay fairly critically closed off until... But I have a pretty good feeling this is basically what all the critics are talking about when they say they don't like this movie. Uh, it has a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Um, I think it's a little unfair. I think if you're really young, I'd say 5 to 14 years old, you might like this movie. 
if you've never seen Star Wars and you've never seen Lord of the Rings and you're a huge fan of the anime, actually, huge fans of the anime really don't like this movie either, so there you go. Um, but yeah, I guess as a grade, I would give it a D plus, and that's mostly just because there's a few fun visual moments, but that's basically it. So I'm signing out, and uh, be sure to catch us ooh, whenever we have a new review up. That's kind of up in the air right now, but possibly a week, possibly two weeks. Um, if it ends up being two weeks, I'll probably do some more at-home reviews to keep you guys entertained. But I know we definitely want to do a review for Inception, so that is going to be awesome. It hopefully saves the summer from being completely lame. Um, catch you later. Bye.